You serious? Hello, this is How to Kill an Hour. I'm Marcus Bronzy. I'm Sean. How you doing, bruv? Very well, man. Very well. Yeah, What's man. What's going on? I'm good, man. I'm good. I've uh, just come back from Birmingham. Uh, something I'm going to talk about on this episode, or maybe even the next episode, when we talk about how I've been killing a bit of time. A little bit tired today, Sean, you know. Same, same, little, same. You feeling it as well? Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to build the energy up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you've just started listening to this show, <laughs> uh, then yeah, this is How to Kill an Hour, like I said, a show where we talk about killing time and we also search the internet and have a look at things and discuss them and crack some joke over them that only we can. Uh, first bit of the show, though, is called Kill a Bit. It's how we've been killing a little bit of time. How have you been killing a bit of time this week, Sean? I haven't done all that much this week, but I uh, did manage to get to the cinema for the first time in quite a while. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, what yeah. did you watch at the cinema? I went bro? and saw Equalizer Three. Equalizer Three. Yeah. The Black John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I explained it to something. Someone was like, "What is it like?" I was like, "Think about John Wick, but a bit more government-like." Denzel Washington, a little bit more of a professional in it. John Wick is obviously in a world of um, assassins. Does, does did the first John Wick come out before the first Equalizer? I swear it did. You know, I can find out. I can yeah, that would be interesting. Looking. You're probably right. I'll just. Yeah, uh, yeah, Otherwise, Denzel might be upset. I don't want to upset Denzel, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't want to mess might up. Send it. It might send for man. Right, Equalizer <laughs> 2014. I feel like... It's going to be close, though. John Wick 1. It feels close, bro. John Wick 1. Wait, 2014. Oh, so I was going to have to find out when. Oh, oh what if I've messed up now? <laughs> hey, hey, all right, cool. Oh, flipping hell. All right. Oh, now we've got to really get into the internet. You got right, well, you, so, you, otherwise, you've got to start calling John Wick the, the, the white equalizer, yeah, the white, white equalizer in it, and then and then I wouldn't be even delving into Keanu Reeves' diverse background. So then the internet will come for me, bro. Yeah, so I'm will. digging myself a grave early doors in this podcast, <sighs> yeah, right? Glad so release date of the equalizer because I'm looking at that page first was the seventh of September two thousand fourteen, right? Okay, we're going to release date here. It's interesting. Seventh September. Okay. 2014. John Wick. All right, let's find it. We're going to have to figure out when the scripts were written. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. When it was filmed. When it was filmed. John Wick, the first film. There was, by the way, there was a John Wick computer game. There were video games. There was one called John Wick. There's, oh, John Wick was a character in Payday 2. Cool. Which is like a heist game. It's like a skin. Oh, yeah, I remember that. John Wick Hex was a game. Which was kind of like a turn-based game, I remember that. But there was a game called John Wick Chronicles in 2017. Anyway, anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, John Wick, the first one. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I don't know if it was the seventh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was October the 24th, 2014. Oh. I'm sorry, Denzel. My guy. Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. I, I'm glad I caught that before we went any further. I'm just what saying. What if I just fumbled my way through the oh. pod? Man, I reckon yeah. I reckon we would open the door <laughs> you know, just sitting the door. in the chair, yeah. innit? Just... <laughs> okay. So I uh, feel you, you, did, you would have just yeah. heard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. So you saw the Equalizer 3, the third in, in the trilogy. Who knows? There might be 10 because we live in a world like that. Um, the first one. So what happened in the, the first one? I can't. This is this is how I am with film, right? <laughs> <laughs> just going to lay out here. I remember the feeling that I get from a film, but I don't remember the film itself. Okay. So I can tell you whether I thought it was a great film or not a great okay. film. And so first equalizer, I do remember bits of it. Uh, amazing film. I think I'm Incredible going, film. I'm I'm going with it also being a good film as well. I think I did enjoy Oh, the first one was, the first one was brilliant. I did enjoy that film. I thought I, the first one was amazing. I think I did. I did enjoy that film. I did enjoy that film. Yeah. Yeah. First one, you loved it. Loved it, loved it. Loved it. All right, chill out, lads. Yeah, chill out. Yeah, chill, chill out. It was that good. Yeah, yeah. It was that good. Second one, yeah. I wasn't such a fan of. I still enjoyed it, yeah. but it wasn't such a there fan. There was a line in the second one where I think it was like, it's one of the commanders that he, this isn't going to spoil it. One of the commanders, this might spoil it, but you know, it's been out long enough. One of the commanders <laughs> that he went and spoke to and spoke about a plan of some mad revenge, was spoke to him and then somebody afterwards said something about, so he's come here to ask you to do that? And she was like, he's not asking for permission. He's just telling me he's going to do it. <laughs> I remember that. There was a good line in it, but you said it was okay. So it gets a little, yeah, yeah. that's it. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the third one, Sean. And I've seen a few people talk about this on social media. So I, I might, I know it has a guess, but I'll let you know if that, if it, if your uh, if it opinion with... is, al- is aligned with them. So I still enjoyed it. <laughs> no, I didn't enjoy it. That's cool, the cool, thing cool. in it. Like I know yeah. going to watch it, I, it served up in enough of what I was expecting. Which so, was? Uh, which was gratuitous violence. Yes. That's it. And <laughs> a thin spreading like butter on toast of plot. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of loose. Uh, it was kind of loose. Um, something I went to it with my cousin actually. And, um, I've won. <laughs> I just remember. Bro, it's all right. He's not going to burst I in it. It's cool. You can <laughs> be honest. Um, no, but at the beginning it came up and it was like 15 and I was like, I feel like back in the day, this would have been at 18. Like, okay. like there's not that many 18s nowadays and then we watched the first episode <laughs> we watched the first episode we watched the first scene and my cousin looked at me and he was like your 15s are different to 18s <laughs> 15s were back in my day I was like yep because yep. okay. it was like you know it was it murkage straight off the top really because yeah, in, yeah. in John Wick the second to last John Wick has come out there's some big violence in it, isn't it? Mm. and I feel like it could have been a 15 like as pa- well parabellum or the para- parabellum isn't it? Yeah, parabellum. yeah parabellum yeah yeah like the fight in the library the way mm. that guy got finished, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that is spicy. But do you think 15s have, have changed then over the years then? Because I feel like that as well. The first 15 I watched that wasn't a 15 was Saving Private Ryan. I do not know to this day how it's not a 15. Grateful. But I don't know to this... Bruv, if I told you it was an 18 off the bat, would you even question it though? No. It's a 15, bro. Uh, do you know what? I feel as if more gore is allowed on a 15 now compared yeah. to... 18. I think maybe the classification difference is more of the like sexual things that you'll see maybe from a 15 to 18. I don't know. That's just and language word. maybe? Because you get like a, sh- a damn or a shit in a, like a 12A. No. Like one. Oh. You get one. God no, but, damn, no, but from bitch. Fif- or something. No, but f- from 15 to 18, I feel as if if you're seeing someone's head explode and yeah. then someone like drop in the Someone's like cunt, and you're like, yeah. "Oh, that sorry, mate, no, no <laughs> not having that at yeah, all." And this guy's yeah, yeah, head's yeah. hanging off by a thread, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, that's all right, though. But yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But, uh, but an erect penis, <laughs> sorry, mate, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> a wet vag. Yeah, that is a, sorry. It's a no for an for an eighteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting. It, it, it'll be interesting to see how the guidelines have changed. Yeah, uh, talking of talking of uh, um, violent films, one that, uh, another film that I did watch, uh, not in the cinema, but uh, I caught up with was um, Sisu. Sisu. So it's a Finnish film. Yeah. Um, it's just, it literally from start to finish, just, just about a guy and him just murking everyone. Oh, uh, see. You know, I think it's set in 1944 and he's just like going around. Uh, like He's like digging for gold. Some Nazis uh, come for him and he ends up just, like you just can't kill this guy in it. Okay, yeah, he, he's, he's just Un- like unkillable. unkillable yeah. Is it because I can take? I like, for example, Equalizer one and two violence, and probably John Wick one and two violence, where it's like a couple of. As it got to three, Parabellum, and I can't even remember much of four now. Like, I felt like there was a wincy stuff in there, like fingernails being pulled off, and that kind of that stuff. I cannot get down Do with. You know what, I yeah. am eyes closed, ears closed on that. I'm. I. 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 I, I agree with you because. Like back in the day, nothing used to make me squeamish. Yeah. Whereas now, there are things actually, especially in sports. When I see, even when I watch like UFC and I see someone's someone's arm being like bent back, I, I can't. Like, there's times I have to look away because it makes me. Yeah, it, it makes me squeamish inside. I'm like, yeah. mm, that's why I can't watch live UFC mm, as well. It's like just it. too. I don't you might be able to. You can you can watch it for me. I it's just seeing getting, someone get elbowed in their temple. I can mm, almost feel it every time. Now, see, I, I'm not really. I don't really, I don't really, I don't really mind. That, yeah. I don't mind that's yeah. fine. No. But <laughs> <laughs> seeing someone getting knocked out cold, totally fine with. Yeah. People taking an absolute beat down. There's a certain point where I'm like, how is this person? Whether it be a guy yeah. or a girl, and that's also a, a, a big difference. Yeah. Um, that's sometimes difficult to watch. But when I see people's knees being hyperextended uh, and, and, that, and I'm like... Yeah. And they play it back in slow-mo. No, like, this oh, is, this oh, must yeah. be the moment where we see the tendon <laughs> pop off. <laughs> yeah, but for me also, you see, it's, it's, I, can, I, I don't mind the punching when it's normal punching. If you're not looking at the YouTube or video or whatever, 
I'm just throwing normal punches. It's when they turn their hand around and start just hammering them with the bottom of oh, the bottom of their fist, and you can see the per like I know the ref knows what he's doing, but I always feel like there's a couple blows that could be not have made. Have Man, hit. there was a there was a guy Mario Yamasaki before who like uh, was a ref. Uh, he was like disgrace ref now, and um, he there were times where he let fights go on too long, and yeah. then he used to he would say uh, I can't remember the quotes exactly, but he was like fuck him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes the most dangerous blow is not the knockout blow, it's the finishing one after that, that pound down on the face where your head, there's, there's nowhere for your head to go. Your head is on the canvas and you hold a whole elbow to your head top. I'm like, that's bro. For me, that is, that's crazy. Anyway, sorry, we've digressed. Equalizer three. Um, I want to say again, Denzel ain't outside. Where, uh, where are you? Because you kind of I skirted still, away from that still. I, I still enjoyed it. Um, I, I I'll say this. I enjoyed it more than my cousin did. Okay. Yeah. Um. It kind of it, it gave me everything that I was kind of expecting from it, but without you know. I'm gonna give yeah. it a. I'm gonna give it like. I'll give it a six. Well, if Equalizer got got e- e- <laughs> and Equalizer two got. <laughs> where where are we sitting on Equalizer three? Is it gonna get? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Is that another? <laughs> <like that? laughs> <laughs> Okay, there you go, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You can read see, into that number. I, I think Sisu was a was actually more yeah. of a more of a fun watch. Okay, if, if, uh, if okay. anyone hasn't seen it, Equalizer definitely worked. Def- like, there's not much. Actually, it was a, fr- a friend of uh, ours who who told me said said for me to go and watch it, and I said to them, "Well, it like, doesn't sound English. What language is it?" And they were like, "I don't know, but there's not much talking." <laughs> So it's that much about the violence you don't even realise that there's Literally. subtitles. Um, so when, yeah. and as soon as as soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, I might have to go yeah, watch yeah, it. Actually, yeah. I might have to go yeah. see it. So, so I don't have to think about any words. It's just oh yeah, yeah. If, if I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna go and <laughs> settle down in to watch, yeah, a purely uh, pure action. violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, sweet man. That sounds alright. What about yourself, man? Uh, for me, uh, I have been driving a new car, so I've been uh, reviewing tech. Uh, here and around and before and after this show uh, and this week I went and got my hands on an Audi RS Q8 which we use to film some other content which I'll be talking about on another episode probably once it's all sorted so um, yeah got my hands on like the biggest SUV in the Audi range I think I mean I just literally caught a peak of it yeah on the way in the Oz, yeah. it is it's, big in it it's quite a big it's quite a big whip I'm not gonna lie I'm big though in it so you're a, you're a big dunny I'm so. a big dunny yeah <laughs> so when I get into it it's nice getting into a big car and not feeling you don't have to part around the corner and and, 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 and Vaseline yourself to get out <laughs> Sean knows this is actually there's an element of truth to this minus the Vaseline <laughs> only special that's cases, where you yeah. went wrong yeah, yeah no, no, it would be easier if I drive any sports cars I can get in I'm just about 6'3 so I'm just about big enough small enough to get in because I think if you're like six or above it's just really uncomfortable there's no space for you to drive it safely um, but if I drive a sports car like you know an R8 or whatever or G- Ford GT whatever like that like I've driven the past the Ford GT I went to Le Mans with Ford or whatever I said to the guy that I did the drive with around town can we drive around the corner when I get out and Jay big up Jay from Ford the nice guy was like why Marcus and I said Jay can we just please your mind he goes cool I have to like spill out. I think there's like a, <laughs> I have to like roll out of the car in the most ungraceful way ever. Cause like, even though I can get in kind of normally, I can't seem to slide out. So I kind of just have to shove my ass out onto the floor, m- shuffle away from the car, then pull my legs out behind me and hope that no one sees me disgracing myself. And then <laughs> like, brilliant. it's bruv, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's my, not cool. But my, this is the opposite. My heart bleeds for all these <laughs> Six foot three plus guys just must be so tough. <laughs> it's a hard life, bro. It's a hard life. It's a hard life, man. It's a hard life. Uh, don't get me started on legroom on planes. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's a big ass car. It's, it's fast as well. Because yeah. like, if look, I'm not a super car guy. Sean's more of a car guy than myself. Um, so the RS Q8 is like the Q8, which came out, I think, 2017, 16, maybe. And then like the RS version is like the racing sport, I it stands for. But um, it's basically where they trick it up. With the, it's got like a it's got a V8 4 liter twin turbo engine, so it's a big car, but it still does not to sixty in three point seven seconds or something or three point eight seconds, not sixty two, which I find a really annoying measurement by the way because it's not to hundred kilometers. Yeah, it? yeah, but come on now, <laughs> come on, sort out. Sounds really specific, isn't it? Sort not to sixty one and a half. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's big. So what's cool is if you are a tall person, 
it's nice because I can sit in the front, have the seat all the way back, comfortable for me. I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> but in the back, there's also enough space for me to sit behind the driver's seat when you it's all the way back you. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can sit behind me. Right, so we right, could that's, fit. That's, that's, that's pretty yeah, decent. Myself and like two of my big mates, like two of our big mates in the back as well. Um, and obviously, because it's like the fancy RS. I usually just get dashed into like the seat pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the back of the seat. They put, you, they put you in the center console. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You, <laughs> put you next to another small mate in the drinks holders. That's what you <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. And I drove it all the way up to Brum to this event. Uh, um, and yeah, bro, it's um, look, is it super comfy? It's su- do you know? Yeah, it's super comfortable. So I drove to Brum and back today, and I've not got the same back problems I'd have in like a, a low you know, sports, you know, racing car, but it still drives very, it's, it's, let's, how do we say it? It's, it's not, responsive. It's, it's not boaty. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel boaty. Like body roll and stuff. Nah, like, like a lot of car, yeah, like a lot of cars that have, um, uh, that are quite big. Now, I feel like they wrap around you a bit more and you don't feel like they're big. Yes, yeah, bigger. You have to drive it a bit like it's a but bigger car. But the sensation car. that it gives you is that of a smaller vehicle. Yeah, it doesn't feel like I'm in a, doesn't feel like I'm in a lump. It doesn't feel like I'm in a minibus. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel like before not, not, feel like, like, Yeah, you're not in America driving a <clears throat> like an Chevy an Escalator or uh, Escalator. Escalator. Yeah, driving, escalator. driving an Escalator is mad, bro. <laughs> mad. Can't get very far. Get a lift. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does not to Please. 60 in like <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what did we do? When we went to, when we was in LA, what did we drive? Like a Chevy Tahoe? I thought it was an Escalator, but I could be wrong. It was a big ass car though, It was it? literally just a shed on wheels. It was a house there on was, wheels. There was, there, there, were, there were like what? There were like eight of us, yeah, with with like luggage, 30, with like thirty kilo suitcases yeah, and hand luggage, and hand luggage, and then and there was still like enough for enough seat, and they were like, yeah, I feel were like there they, cup holders next to every seat I, as well, bro? I feel as if people had to pass messages down to the back, yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, tell me, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that tune's alright, you know? Can you, can you play that tune for the start again? And there was like a time difference in between yeah. coming to the front of the car and back, <laughs> yeah, bro. But I always say when we go over to places like that. I always want to get the biggest car possible, especially in America. And people are like, why? And it's not to stun. I just want to feel safe on the roads because the motorways are big, the roads mm. are big. So I feel like if I'm going to make a, a little boo-boo, I want people to see my car driving a... I've heard someone a, use that. Term. A boo-boo, yeah, yeah. It's up there with hooping, <laughs> hollering, hollering, hooping that I've been using off the pod and on the pod. Sean rinses me whenever I say that. Hooping and hollering. But yeah, like if I drove something, like one of my favourite cars to drive around London is a smart car. I would not want to drive that around LA. Just as for all America, I feel like the roads are you, just too I, big. You, you kind of you always feel like you're going to get swallowed up and no one will notice. I feel like I could just yeah, a car could just, just park on me <laughs> at the stoplights, and I'm just yeah, I'm done in it. Um, but yeah, how do we get there? Yeah, so the RSQ is massive. Speaking of storage space, actually, six hundred and five liters of storage. Like I got in the boot and closed it for a joke when we shot the YouTube video, and there's space for more of me in the like another me in the boot. So massive. Um, and yeah, like back's got heated seats and aircon and stuff like that. I think you can put massages on it. I had 22 inch rims on it. You can get 23 inch rims if you get the Vorsprung Technique version as well. So yeah, and a big old, se- my fi- one of my favorite things, bad boy sound system. I was about to ask. Yeah, I had the Bose sound system, <laughs> which uh, was loud, it's like two 2000 watts, which is, is loud enough, bro. But yeah, man, a, a nice drive. Um, if you have 115,000 pounds spare. Was it flappy? Uh, yeah, I had flaps. Oh, automatic. Um, had the RS button with two settings for the sports modes, which was nice. And the engine and the, the exhaust is very broom broomy, <laughs> but you can't do the thing where you can't rev it and hear the pops and crackles because it's got a safety thing where it stops the revs at four, so it doesn't do many pops and crackles. Stop missing it again. Yeah, you got upset in it. You got upset, <laughs> Sean. When I put it in eco mode, Sean stops it. Sean got Sean was in a car with me once that was a bit sporty in it, and I had it in eco mode, so it did start stop at the lights, and you were like, "What are you doing, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, yeah, honestly, the purist and so yeah, man, it was it was fun and it was it was a good car to take up on the road for the trip that I was doing. Um, fit all the kit in it. Um, if we were going to take more of the talent that came with us to the trip, we would have fitted more of the talent in there, nice and easy. Um, it's nice to know like that there's a car out there that if I did if I did want to spend that kind of money on that size vehicle, that there's something that's comfortable. And obviously, people always do the urus. Eurus. Mm. Am I saying it wrong? Eurus? Eurus? Eurus. Eurus. He always goes, it's not a Eurus though. It's just a copy. I'm like, bro, that's like saying a grape doesn't taste like an apple. That's two two different things, bro. It's not a Lambo. Mm. Um, I get it. VW owns Lambo and they own Audi. And I think technically the RSQ8 is the same chassis. chassis. So you're looking at it. But it just, 
I don't know. I think that's uh, all the car journalists I hear speaking about. Always make that comparison. I feel like it's a bit like eating an apple, but Look, going, it's you, not. It, it's not a grape though. Yeah. That's how I feel like. And also price different. Is it like fucking one hundred fifty or two? I think. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've seen them. I've seen them around one six five, one seventy, and stuff like that. Um, one five from one sixty. The fuck? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's a yeah. sizable chunk. We're talking about a third of the price in it, almost. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I suppose what. This would be the thing in it. Whilst you get, if you drive, okay, you're driving a Lambo. I would, without having a, without uh, having a, had a proper look um, at it yet. Uh, yeah. The, as far as SUV go, SUVs go, the Urus is a good looking. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. SUV. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I can't imagine it's that much quicker. I mean, we're talking what? I've literally, I've only brought the stats up because where it's, Point one and a half, I think, or maybe point two seconds quicker. Maybe it must mean. sound absolutely wild, though, isn't it? If you can't rev it, I might cry. <laughs> 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 I told you about. I told you about like the the times of where I've been in cars, yeah. which just stop you from doing things that you should normally be able to do. Yeah, just, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can't deal with it. And that's why I'm the opposite to you. I kind of like the safety of that. You get me? Because I'm honestly, bro. When I, I'm, I, I like to have a, I like to have the access to the to the acceleration to the responsiveness, but I'm more than happy to be like. Doop -de -doop -de -doo. No, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Doop -de -doo. <laughs> what, what, are you gonna accidentally fall asleep while the car's on in neutral? Rev it until it just absolutely redlines until <laughs> yeah. the engine blows up, and yeah, then you wake yeah. up being like, oh no, oh, oh, on no. fire because your car's blowing up. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You should be able to <laughs> maybe not wake up. Yeah. You should be able to rev a car, man. You're right. You're 100 percent right, right, bro. But yeah, I drove it. It was on fun. the whole. Yeah. Most people, aren't, most people yeah. aren't going to be affected yeah. by the fact that you can't do a full lock and floor it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. You know what I mean, why can't I go sideways around this roundabout? Mm, oh, that doesn't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna... The law as well. Do you know what? it's a shame? What? Next time we do that, we should get you to get in it first because you could have got in it and could have gone for a little spin or something. Maybe we'll talk about it on the next episode. Sure. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's there. It's vibes. Um, and by the time you hear the next episode, it will have gone back. <laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah, man, I liked it. I, 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 the maddest thing was is I hate this when I drive big cars. Like the cameraman went to me, shout out to Ned. He went, hey, the car just like looks like you, you know, bruv. I was like, <laughs> oh, all right, cool. Like, so what? When I drive a, a smaller car, is that not me? He's like, no, but this just really suits you, you know. I'm like, all right, cool, thanks. Like, so what? I did, I did find it borderline comical when you used to, used to pull up in a smart because you're, <laughs> did just, you? Because you're a big unit. You, 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 know you, know I mean? you played clown music like, in your head. <laughs> but you didn't have to. You didn't have to like roll out of it. So yeah, yeah, not yeah, exactly. I didn't have to roll out of it. So you know, it was, it was all blessed, bro. Absolutely all blessed. Um. Anyway, shall we continue with the show? I got the power, rappers turn sour, they get devoured. I'm about to show you all how to kill an hour. hour, hour. Shout out to our guy Harry Mack there on that. Yeah, yeah. Um. anyway, yeah, so it leads us on to our next part of the show, Sean, which is, I really struggle with that, show Sean. Sure, sure, Sean, sure, Sean. Uh, yeah, which is, well. I don't know. What is I, it? I don't know. Which bit are we going to do? Who is it? It's going to be, I'll let you lead. Uh, it's going to be. Know. What, what, are we gonna do <laughs> <laughs> jokes? Jokes of the week. Okay then, yeah, the jokes of the week there, man. Uh, so Sean and I scour the internet for the best of the worst jokes and hit each other with them. I've got some horribly crud ones today. Yeah, the, uh, the talent I've got today is like it's, it's, it's not great, and I haven't got many. It's not great. It's gonna be a short jokes of the week. I've got one that might get me in trouble with the internet a little bit. Ooh, I'm very intrigued. <sighs> but, nah, man, I think... This is the thing, right? I feel like, again, this is not... These are not jokes that we've made up or these are just jokes that have been popping or whatever. Because I, I, we need to... If, if, if we're going to say jokes that are, are only, like, super PC, yeah. I feel like we're going to run out of content fairly quickly. I feel like no one would listen. However, I'm not out here trying to do jokes just for clout. I'm just finding things that are giving me a little chuckle. And I feel like in jokes, no one is safe, right? Mm -mm. It's all about the context. Yeah, so what do you call a Spanish footballer with no legs? Oh, I'm thinking about like Juan Ni or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. That would be with a <laughs> half a leg. Yeah, Juan Ni. Juan leg. Yeah, yeah Juan leg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> close, but no cigar. Uh, gracias. <laughs> it's a play on words. Yes. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. I've right. got two more horrible. I'm sure they're horrible, bruv, this one. Dogs can't operate MRI machines, but cats scan. <laughs> so shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. It's going to get in it, in it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. yeah, but I stop still cracking up because it's that shit. <laughs> I've, got, I've got another one for you then. Yeah. What did the nut say when it was chasing the other nut? I don't know. I'm a cashew. <laughs> That's worse than the cat. <laughs> oh, no, I like I actually I, I like the cat scan uh, one. That good, was good. good. That was good. That was right, tickly, that and that's tickly. it. I'm out, bro. You are. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm glad you laid a three shots in the chamber. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> you laid a fairly low bar because mine not much better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. All right. <clears throat> what have we got? A man walks into a life. A man walks into a library and asks for a book on turtles. The librarian asks, hardback. The man replies, yeah, with a little head and legs. <laughs> the, <torture is> shit. <laughs> the worst thing is, is I knew where it was going as soon as you, as soon as you said it. <laughs> yeah, go on, that's, go. Like, that's a shit joke, isn't it? Yeah. A man goes to a job interview and the interviewer asks, What's your greatest weakness? You know that old yeah, yeah. interview question. <laughs> the man replies, honesty. The interviewer says, I don't think honesty is a weakness. The man replies, I don't give a damn what you think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes! No, I like that one. I don't give a damn what you think. <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, I've got, uh, oh, this is a proper dad joke. You, pre- you prepared for the... This I'm, is I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. My colleague can no longer attend next week's innuendo seminar, so I had to fill her slot instead. The lie that you didn't enjoy. Do you know what? Do you know what? <laughs> it was delightful. It took a while to hit, but I got it. Oh, I like it. I go. like, I like it. Go, uh, so yeah, <laughs> there you go. Gets that. <laughs> there we go. And that, and that was <laughs> the run. <laughs> and, and that was <laughs> jokes of the week. There we go. There we go. So what you what? did was you asked me to say it and instead changed your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over the show. show. Let's go again. Go on. Go on. And that was <laughs> jokes, jokes of the week. week. There we go. There you go. go. There you go. Oh, smashed man. it. Look smashed at that. it. Finally Absolutely got there. crushed it. Um, and then I guess it leads on to our next part of the show, which we're going to get into, which is funky headlines, bro. Funky headlines funky of the week. Oh, okay. Mad headlines of the week. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one to you. <laughs> All right, I've got a couple here that I've been sitting on for a while. Oh, this might be another one that if I start reading it out, you might be like, Marcus, you have already said this. If that happens, uh, I'm going to go, Marcus, you've already said this. Okay, cool. That's going to be my exact response. Did you know? No, I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the world's dirtiest thing ever, right? Or the oldest. You know what? Let me start that again. This is it. bringing a whole new meaning to the word vintage. A 140-year-old pair of Levi jeans was found in a mine shaft and they just sold for $87,000. Bro. Damn. Turns out gold isn't the only valuable thing you can find in a mine. Hey. Oh, hey. that. Yeah. Was, was that on there? Did you Absolutely that? reading that bar for bar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a pair of... <laughs> A <laughs> pair, yeah, that's it. A pair of vintage Levi's discovered in an abandoned mine shaft in an American West in the American West sold for eighty seven thousand dollars at an auction in New Mexico. The jeans, which date back to the eighteen eighties, were unearthed by a self described denim archaeologist. Made up job. Made up job. He found it, and then he, they were like, "What do you do?" He's like, "I'm, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a I'm de- de- definitely a denim archaeologist." Because you're just an archaeologist, aren't you? <laughs> why have you got to put the word? De- why is your speciality denim for? Why is it? Why would you go down a mine shaft and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm just looking for denim. Going through gold, gems, <laughs> Love right spread them over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, one second, is that a pair of 501s, the originals? Um, so anyway, the oh, denim archaeologist... Yeah, denim archaeologist... Yeah. Well, it's like being like, I'm a... I'm a beer, I'm a beer connoisseur. No, brother, you like pints, innit? I don't know, I just feel like it's, it's weird. Why would you be so specific like that if you're an archaeologist? Is there... I don't feel like there's a degree in denim archaeology. I don't feel like there's a master's to be had in that. Do you know what I mean? I don't think you can go to a respected school like Oxford or Cambridge, yeah, and be like, I'm going, I'm going to be the doctor 
of uh, denim. Anyway, as mm. I was saying, um, Dr. Michael Harris, several, no, joking, he's not a doctor, <laughs> but uh, Michael Harris, the denim archaeologist, several year, uh, said that he, um, he unearthed them several years ago before they were snapped up by a pair of vintage clothing dealers in Durango Vintage Festivus in October. Uh, apparently, he, the guy who saw them said he's still kind of bewildered, surprised in himself at even purchasing them, said the guy called Kyle Horpert, who bought the jeans with his friend Zip Stevenson, which has got to be a made-up name, the name Zip. I don't know. But anyway, do you, did you know this, Sean, that Levi's of this age rarely come up at auction? They're especially sought after among collectors. This particular... I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, can I just say, yeah, on. on the name thing, Yeah, there's a guy in the NFL, yeah. and his first name is Sauce. <sighs> Spelt how? Sauce. S-A-U-C-E. Sauce. What's his surname? Oh, I can't remember. Carry on. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, I'm wicked. Because I reckon, you know, Burger Sauce, would be, if his surname was like Burger or something like that, or... Sauce Burger would be a bit annoying. <laughs> <laughs> the name's Burger. <laughs> Sauce Burger. <laughs> You were like, nah. Uh, uh, sauce Gardener. What? His name is Sauce Gardener. My man Gardener's the sauce. sauce. Hey, <laughs> come on. Oh, that's, a, that's a sick name. Sauce Gardener. Like, imagine that. Hey, babe, what's your name? Sauce. sauce. You'd have an You can call you me Sauce. <laughs> you would have an effect every time that you said your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the lights would go down. Yeah, yeah. You'd go, sauce. sauce. <laughs> you know what? Definitely would be like, the name's Sauce. What's your name? Well, my name is Sauce. Yeah, 100%. Right. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. So they bought some old jeans. I, I, I can read more, but I don't. This is so beyond my comprehension of why of, of, of why we'd buy stuff like this. Yeah, I just do you know, don't do you know, understand do you know why. It it, like, when I watch the show Porn Stars, yeah. there are some things which turn out to be worth bucks. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's crazy and there are some things which i expect to be worth like 150 grand and yeah. it's like 800 dollars, and you're like what why like, yeah. yeah some things it's just like i don't you know i, I just don't, don't get, get it. why jeans in particular are so like, like i mean I'm, I'm guessing it's obviously got to do with the fact that there are not many pairs of jeans from the 1880s that are still around today or, yeah. or in that maybe the fact that they were in a mine shaft yeah. not maybe a different composition of uh, air down there and this the earth and they got preserved. I don't know. I'm, t- I'm fully making it up. I, I might become a, <laughs> a denim. A, a, a denim. It's like me becoming like a Timberland archaeologist. I only forage for Timberland boots that have been buried after the great rush of 2006 Timberland purchases. No, it wasn't even that. It was like 2001. Where, oh, and then where, you're going to find some light blue ones somewhere. Yeah, boy. <sighs> probably, in my, probably in my attic somewhere. I feel like we all had a pair of baby blue Tims. Versace blue jeans sprayed on top of ourselves as well <laughs> but like for me for stuff like this like for this these finds for me Sean the, the funny bit is is like what do you do with it like if you have an old car like if you were like this is the first ever Rolls Royce and you could still start it and here it go and maybe drive it around the block or not or whatever you can sit in it see it look at it touch it do you, do you put them on do you just put I them mean, on I, and I, look I, at them I reckon you, I reckon you, you like you, f- you frame them and you I don't know get a little plaque together with so people go, what the fuck is that? And then you can, they can go read it and see how impressive it is that they're from the 1880s. And yeah. then people will marvel. It's like any piece of art. You can, I feel as if art, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And then you just got to make a good story to go up with it. And that sells it. So, okay. So yeah. the jeans need to be like owned by, you know, one eyed willy, you know, that you, you like killed seven sheriffs and hid down a mine shaft and removed his jeans and, and tied them to see, that's uh, why, see, a scarecrow. Why didn't you tell me about and that? And disappeared. And rumor is he's still, his ghost still lurks around. It makes sense. If, if I knew there were one-eyed, one-eyed willies, then he would have <laughs> tell me the rest of the article. Then I'm like, of course they're worth bucks. No, you're on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, uh, oh, oh, wow. Okay, this is actually interesting. This is addition. There's a label on the inside of the jeans that read, the only kind made by white labor. Wait, wait here. So they're Levi's told... Uh, said that they introduced a slogan after the Chinese Exclusion Acts of 1882, which barred Chinese workers from entering the US at the time of rampant discrimination. In fact, Levi's even had an anti-Chinese labour policy in place during the time. Oh, I thought, I read the anti-labour policy and thought it was a positive thing. No, it's just racism in a different policy. I thought it was, anti- I saw that anti-labour bit. I was like, yes, they were. No, they weren't. Um, it's wild to see that. So these are jeans that you can wear that confirm you were, 
racist jeans. I didn't think that a pair of real racist jeans exist that you could. So it's Levi's getting passed to, down through the generations. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's terrible. That's a good one. Actually, I like it. Um, <laughs> So now these are racist jeans. I don't want them to be worth over a hundred grand or whatever, or 80, 80 grand. You know, anyway, put your racist jeans up on the wall. Yeah, show yeah, them to yeah. everyone. Yeah, it's like a bit like a Confederate flag in it. Now I feel mm. like putting them on the wall. Yeah, yeah, them jeans, you know, made by white labour. Yeah, okay, cool. That's why they've lasted so long. All right, mate. No, they're in the mine shaft, <laughs> dickhead. All right, um, yeah. So that's it, Sean. That's it. Uh, a one hundred and forty year old pair of Levi's was found in a mine shaft, and they sold for eighty seven thousand dollars. Wow, but yeah, man. Uh, you got a story? I may have another one. I think I have a story. Again, if if we've uh, touched upon this, you're very welcome to stop me here. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Marjorie Perkins, woman, mm-hmm. they're to classify that, 87, okay. fights off awfully hungry teen attacker before feeding him. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie Perkins, 87, woke up to find her attacker. It's not funny, Marcus. Okay, sorry. <laughs> standing over her, but after initially fending him off, she then offered to feed him after he revealed he was awfully hungry. Do you think that that's just that, that like, that duty, that even after, like, fending someone off, you're, they're like, you're like, oh, you want a sandwich? Do you know like, what? This, put, this is what, this is the difference between men and women, yeah? Men do not have the capacity as a whole, and I'm, this is a sweeping generalisation, I'm going to sit in it and dance in this stew, okay? I'm going to spoil in it. We don't have the capacity to even sense the need of someone that is that desperate. We, I could only, I could only see that Sean as he's trying to rob me, and I need to stop him. He's a bad man. She somehow has been woken up out of slumber. Eighty-seven years old. You're vulnerable, vulnerable as ever, and you still know this guy's hungry. However. The fact that he said the words, I'm awfully hungry. I just don't know where that fits into the conversation. Like, is he trying to like rob her or hurt her or something? And she's fighting him off. He just goes, I'm awfully hungry. <laughs> I'm <laughs> awfully hungry. And she goes, hang on. Did you say you're awfully hungry? Would you like a sandwich? Do you know what I mean? It's, for me, I'm just like, right. at what point does the word awfully, like awfully come out of your mouth? I've never said, I'm, I've never said to you, Sean, Sean, I'm awfully hungry, you know? I'm like, awfully hungry. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you reckon if he had worded it a different way, she would have just like, Shot him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I need a snack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I'm slightly hungry. Yeah, I'm a bit peckish. If I'm peckish. Peckish. Buried under the uh, buried buried under, under the floorboards. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, so what did they have a? He must have. They must have opened up because because it, it is all joking aside. People can be hard up, and that is why they're doing these things. And then if someone takes the time to talk to them, they can really stop it from I mean, happening. Or they're like, oh god, I'm awfully hungry after beating up old ladies. Yeah. You know, it's a bit. Yeah. Anyway, well, I guess it would, make, it would make you hungry, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Probably. Any, any kind of physical. Yeah. Uh, Marjorie Perkins was asleep when a teenage attacker entered a home in the town of Brunswick, Maine, around two a.m. As she woke up, the young man who had taken off his trousers, okay, this is taking a wow, turn, told her he was going to cut her. Wow. I thought to myself, if he's going to cut, then I'm going to kick. So I jumped into my shoes. Yo, she's ready. She's a fucking badass. Yeah, there must have been them Skechers shoes that you don't need to use your hands to Definitely Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely Crocs. <laughs> there was a ske- oh, the Skecher ones. Yeah, yeah, Skechers. Don't you one of those hands people. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, the yeah, other yeah, again yeah. the other day. It really annoys me. Yeah. <laughs> Throwback um, to an old episode. Go with it. Miss <laughs> Perkins grabbed the chair. Yo, she jumped into her shoes like... And like, grabbed the chair? Like, like Gromit. Yeah. Yeah. Wallace or Gromit? <laughs> Which one was... Yeah, Gromit was a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Wallace. No, what, so Wallace jumped into Jumped into her shoes like Wallace. And then grabbed the chair to use as a shield, but was struck on the cheek and forehead during the encounter. So hang on. She's been hit on the head and cheek. This is what I'm saying. And this still manages nuts. to put on two shoes and draw for a chair. For defense. And then this is the thing that it says, Fuck eventually, yeah. Amazing. the teenager grew tired. I was like, Wow. She out cardioed. Wow. She out cardioed the teenager. That is, that, I feel that's a damning verdict on, uh, on on our teenagers of today he might he wow he got out cardio and she he had a jump by marjorie on, he, and he had the jump on her he had the jump he on her jump she on out cardio him you know she was half asleep and wow. she wallaced into her shoes picked up a chair took a few blows my man gassed out he gassed out he gassed out he was working his cardio honestly wow wow that is you know what there's only one reason why that could have happened to him though must have been awfully hungry because when yeah. you are 
so you just gas terrible. out. You ever tried to work out when you're hungry, bro? Lost. Oh, it's mad, bro. It's, it's mad. Struggling. So maybe he was on. Maybe he's feeling the deficit of calories that he just started was like. Wow, but well, I'm, I'm glad, glad, I'm glad Marjorie, you guessed that. Let's I bet Marjorie, her, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I bet Marjorie had a very strong. She, she sounds like the kind of person that has three square meals a day, proper carbs, bit of protein in there. I think she does Pilates, yoga, and obviously some form of self defense. And she was fully charged, ready to go, and had him up. But I, I, sorry, I need to let you continue this story because this is I'm am, I'm disgusted by his behavior, yes. but I'm yes. amazed by the bravery shown by Marjorie, which is Indeed. surpassed my bravery probably from the first thing that she did, which is think to put on footwear. No, no, if you're gonna cut, that's I'm clari- gonna kick. That's clarity. If you're gonna cut, I'm gonna kick. I would not clarity. Even have- what absolute clarity? I mean, equalizer four. You, Marjorie, Mar- come hey, on. Do you know what, yeah? Marjorizer. That's a good shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so after he grew tired, he and he went he went into the kitchen where he revealed yeah. he was awfully hungry and hadn't had anything to eat for quite a while. What so he gassed out and backed away into the kitchen, I gotta presume. And on his way out said, I'm really sorry, I'm actually really hungry. So she beat him in the physical contest, and then he had to apologize and explain, bro. I, mean, I rate her. Do man. you think he was apologizing because he was like, no, nah, the only reason you got the better, like, <laughs> yeah. the one off on me is because I'm really hungry. Like, yeah. normally, normally, yeah. this would go down a different way. I would have yeah. got gassed out, but I had to wait, cut, and like, yeah. oh, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, the rehydration I, process. I had to drop weight well. for you, Marjorie, because <laughs> I heard that you was uh, a, a flyweight. <laughs> so I had to drop weight for you. <laughs> and I don't want to take it. Can I just and say- Marjorie was like, is it? All right, well, how about you have a little sandwich and we, we go again, yeah? Huh? I'll make the sandwich so I know that it's, you're nourished, yeah? You're sustained. <laughs> While we're laughing about this, I just, I just want to make sure that people know only reason why we can do is because it ended up. It ended up okay. I hope so. Because like you better no, you like, no, at like, the end. It's like one of those yeah, videos yeah, where, like, yeah. near misses and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll watch those. If if anyone gets seriously injured in it, I don't want to watch yeah, any yeah, of them. Yeah. Like, you don't, yeah, no. you only share it to the WhatsApp group. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, seriously. Um, yeah, go on. She gave him a box of peanut butter. What? And honey crackers, two protein drinks, and two tangerines. I know See, we cracked a joke, but this actually sounds like a weight training thing. Do you know what I mean? Peanut butter. We know that some crackers. So she's saying these are these are some thick carbs, high high calorie count. Mm-hmm. And she gave him some protein. Just had a couple of protein shakes lying around. She sounds like a badass. Hey. You know? She gangster. sounds like a badass. You know. you. She sounds like I think she's of, a superhero. In the I night. think she can pull up the floorboards and she's got a little safe she, under the salt floorboards yeah, with a full that, assault rifle and kit in it. And you know, the only reason she wasn't out like yeah. killing bad guys, yeah. probably just a night off. 87, she's like, oh, you know what? I'll give myself one night off a week. She's giving the criminals a night off. She is. That's what she's criminals. doing. <laughs> she's giving the criminals a night off. <laughs> Fuck it. Can we just get, we need to get a round of applause sound effect. Where's our round of applause sound effect? Marjorie is, you are, you are, so Marjorie. Boy. Absolute G. She's getting more than the equaliser. She's getting oh, the whole lot. Oh, Come on, oh, there you go, go, there you go. Like, um, big bro, up, big up, Marjorie. Um, she sounds every every stage of this story. She sounds like a badass. Is there a resolution to this? Did he get arrested? Did she let him off? Or um, did he, they go for round he two? Left, but this, this is the thing. This is the thing that's like so worrying. <laughs> I mean, she called nine one one and was talking to an operator when the teenager collected his trouser and left. This is how much she she just like my man's still eating this. <laughs> Tangerines and protein shake, and she's like in front of him calling the feds, like, Yeah, you ate this, sunny. Yeah. sunny. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat. And, put, and you know what? Put your trousers on. No, no. Disgrace. He left behind a knife. This is the thing. He left behind a knife, a shirt, a pair of shoes, and a water bottle containing alcohol. Uh, he was arrested nearby, thank God, um, after being trapped by police dogs. He faced the charge of burglary, criminal threatening, assault, and underage drinking. I, underage I, I, drinking. I, I, oh, okay. I, there's that. There's also, obviously, that's oh, under oh. the age of 21 though in America, isn't it? Oh, yeah, under the age of 21. Yeah, yeah. But there's also like the knife, the taking off of the trial. There's a, there's a lot, yeah, there's, there's, there's some, there's some serious on. red flags going on here. Miss um, Perkins, who has become a bit of an international celebrity, so she should be. Uh, so she still feels safe in the home where she's lived for 42 years. But what? Worries about, but she worries about rampant crime. She said, I think our law has just folded up. People aren't afraid of anything anymore. They feel they can do as they please. So there was a, I don't know if it's a happy ending, but it's there's a there's a there's a positive ending, and uh, Marjorie's an absolute hero, bro. He, she disarmed him, and he left without his armaments. Yeah, he could not. She he left like without any without his stuff. Yeah, and her response was, "I still feel safe at home. I just worry about crime out there." Tell me, 
she does not sound like an ex-vigilante badass. Ex, ex-vigilante. You know what I'm saying? It just, you know, oh, yeah, just she's to protect like, her I worry here. about, I worry about the crime out there. Yeah. Like, that is the most Batman sentence I've heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like Bruce Wayne going, I still feel safe at home. <laughs> no, so like, I, still care, I still feel safe at home. And then like the Batman monologue, but I worry about the crime in the streets out there. <laughs> Fucking hell, Sean. Yeah. They got Marjorie. Absolute badass. <laughs> I just need to double check to make sure her name was. Her name was Marjorie, wasn't it? Was yeah, I don't know. Up. If you just made it up, that's great. <laughs> to protect her identity. <laughs> yes, that's what, that's what it was, obviously. Professional. I, I think I'm happy to end the show there, Sean, because that is... I'm blown away, bro. I'm blown away. That is probably one of the bravest stories I've heard ever. I couldn't even complete step one of that. Someone's standing over you, intoxicated, trying to hurt with you. With a shank. With a shank. Close off. Clearly got the illest intent. You mm. have the clarity of mind to disarm then see that they need some help, then get them out, call the police, and they get arrested. No one's hurt, including yourself. Bro. She, Bro. They didn't even discuss her injuries because she was... she like, So superficial. She probably, she probably batted away the ambulance. Get, 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 yeah, get yeah, out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sewed herself up. Scratch, I reckon sewed herself up. Fuck <laughs> it, while she's on the phone. Fuck, you know. One-handed. One-handed, sewing her cheek up. Badass. Flipping hell! Got her glasses on. What an absolute legend! I bet she went back home and after all that happened, said, "I learned a glass of whiskey tonight and just had a double." <sighs> the world keeps turning. <laughs> Sorry, I thought she just yeah, she sounds legend. like a badass. Um, absolute legend. Anyway, yeah, please make sure you follow How to Kill an Hour uh, on all social medias at How to Kill an Hour. Uh, I am on social media as well at Marcus Bronzy M A R C U S B R O N Z Y. We will be back in your ear holes soon. I can't wait to tell you about how we killed some time in Birmingham as well. Um, being a big kid, really, basically. Where can we find you? Nowhere. 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 I'm no, invisible. No. Uh, this has been How to Kill an Hour. Uh, I've been Marcus Bronzy. Stay safe out there. And Marjorie, pick up yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute champ. Yeah, can we get some... I hope she's got, like, she's got like an account that everyone can go and follow her. Oh, man. It would Hero. be badass. Yeah. Hero. Hero of the week. <laughs> 